Kingdom Come Deliverance was a game that when building up to its 2018 release, I was getting more and more excited to dive into. But it was a rocky launch to say the least, with the game suffering with a terrible case of Cyber Sky Syndrome, with a whole range of bugs and technical issues. Some game breaking, and some downright hilarious. Getting in the way of its open world, single player experience. I, as many others did, played for a little while, then wrote a salty review, and stuck the game on the digital shelf, with the mind to return to it, once the dust had settled, and the possibility for an issue-free experience would be most likely. Well, today is that day, as over the past few weeks I've returned to the Kingdom of Bohemia to uncover its true potential, and see what it has to offer players today. As you can see from the title, this wasn't exactly smooth sailing, but nonetheless, this is Kingdom Come Deliverance, and it's infuriating excellence. Right off the top, this video is going to be as spoiler free as possible, as especially with single player RPGs, the story is pretty integral, although there will be some minor spoilers for the very early hours of the game. That story being of Henry, the son of a blacksmith, that plays the part of the main protagonist, and with just one look at him should indicate that Kingdom Come isn't quite the game where you play as a roided up super chad, systematically clobbering his way across the lands, quite the opposite. Henry is a simple bloke something that I feel the game tries a little too hard to get across at times, as some of Henry's dialogue made me seriously question whether he should be allowed near sharp objects at all. Hilariously timed inner monologues, still quite hungry. coupled with the libido of a seven-year-old, oh. So that's a woman. Henry definitely hits the mark when coming to convince the player that you have a steep mountain to climb, to being anything that could be considered formidable, but he's oddly charming, and I would be lying if he didn't win me over in the end, even though I had far lost count of the amount of times that he made me laugh for the wrong reasons. As you are no doubt aware, Zach the, blacksmith. the story of Kingdom Come follows a very typical premise, and doesn't exactly try and reinvent the wheel when it comes to RPG storytelling. But what I will say is that the voice talent in this game is fantastic, and really helps breathe life into the world as well as its inhabitants. The developers made some great choices when casting for the game, and for a smaller team than the ones typically seen creating open world RPGs, it's clear to see that a lot of passion has gone into crafting the world of Bohemia. The towns are bustling with traders and beggars and interesting characters that will dynamically change their behaviour depending on what time of day it is. A lot of NPCs go about their daily business, really helping to reinforce that feeling of towns in the medieval era. The countryside is lush and immersive, with wildlife and small encampments, coupled with some effective sound design to really give it believability. There are some indicators, however, sprinkled around the world that Resource may have been a bottleneck for Warhorse Studios. A good example of this would be to introduce you to an NPC that I've come to know simply as Greg. My first encounter with Greg was during an attempt to woo a female local where I was forced to give him a bit of a beatdown for being a slimy bastard. This clearly upset Greg on a biblical scale as we later encountered Greg attempting to murder me using nothing but his face while moonlighting as the opposing faction's infantryman. Greg later tried the stealth option attempting to achieve a religious victory by temporarily joining the clergy. Greg then tried to pull the wool over my eyes by donning a fake beard and standing in as the neighbourhood huntsman followed on later by Greg scraping together what coin he had left for half a suit of armour and attempting to batter me while working in his latest role as a bandit. Don't think that just because you put a slightly less pointy hat on that I don't know it's you, Greg. Ah, there's no mistaking those chubby cheeks, you little tit. Safe to say that extended play will lead to encountering some reused assets and familiar faces, but the way Warhorse makes up for quantity in its open world is down to the feel and immersion. Not since my first steps into games such as Skyrim have I felt so immersed in an RPG. Even the crafting of potions using the alchemy skill really feels like you're going through a true-to-life process. The immersion is also augmented by the way the player takes on quests, with countless tasks having a wide range of possibilities and routes to reaching a conclusion. A quest centred around taking out a target in a monk's monastery was grating on me, when tasked with a several hour long investigation to confirm said target. So instead, I went with a hunch, beat the guy to death in the garden, and ran away giggling. Warhorse, like most immersive RPGs, leaves a fair amount around the game for the player to figure out on their own. And this is great, but the developer's consistency with what it does instruct the player with is when, for my playthrough at least, when things started to get infuriating. Example. Henry, at the start of the game, is crap. 
crap at everything, reading, speaking, and most obviously, fighting. Yeah, your moves are weak. Okay, bitch? As I found out time and time again by getting a swift knee to the face any time I came anywhere near my enemy. Fair enough. The game after some time leads you to a source where you can train and introduces some key combat mechanics, such as combos and perfect blocking. Even after following the tutorial, combat is a struggle, and I assumed that leveling my combat skills would slowly improve Henry's ability. And after enough practice, he'd be far more formidable in combat. After many levels in both combat skills, as well as perks and levels in my weapon of choice, I put this to the test, only to find that no matter what I did, I was still leaving encounters battered and bruised, and still very much friends with Mr. Knee in the face. It turns out that I had foolishly not realised that buried in the back of the codex and the menus for the game was a small section on Master Strikes, an ability that once learned from a specific NPC selecting a specific option that the game tells you nothing about apart from being buried in the back of a codex menu that nobody looks at, and I didn't even know was there. Combat becomes practically laughable by comparison. Still fuming after many, many previous failed attempts, I was even able to cruise to victory at the local tourney, followed by the salty former champion Black Peter then hunting me down and attempting to murder me. Yes, Black Peter's dead. They should call him Black and Blue Peter which was an example of a loop which occurred a few times with my time with Kingdom Come. A design choice or lack thereof making me annoyed, then the game winning me over with something dynamic or interesting. A loop that was sometimes inverted with experience like the one I had doing a nighttime mission sneaking into a castle. I was told by the game that I would need black clothing to slip into the shadows and be successful, and that to make sure I was not wearing any heavy armour to be super silent. Good information, I thought and the tension was high, scaling the wall to the keep in the dead of night. My first task was to take out two guards along the keep walls, so I snuck silently, and... Fuck. Wait, what? What just happened? Fuck. Oh my god. The alarm's... Fuck. Why? The alarm's been After doing this around five or six times, I looked it up, and it turns out I need stealth level five in order to progress here. It's worth mentioning here also that this is a mission from the main storyline, and there's a fair amount of build-up to it. During the discussion about preparations, was it not too much to ask that maybe inform me that it's literally impossible to complete the main objectives unless I have the specific level in a skill? The Night Raid is the equivalent of having a story quest where seemingly the only way to progress is to pick up a potato off the table. So you proudly stride up to the table, pick up the potato, and it explodes and kills everyone. Then you look up a guide and it tells you you have to reload your save, and you have to venture out to find the fucking potato trainer! I should have known things were going to go wrong, with a bloody bearded Greg leading the team. That's right, Greg. I see you. And as the final slap in the face, when I was fast travelling to the NPC to train stealth, I failed a chance to flee check and was dogpiled on by a gaggle of cumans like the new kid trying to get to the school cafeteria. During another mission, I was enjoying a large-scale battle with bandits as well as the frame rate, when the game tasked me with taking out the archers. With my clansmen by my side, I ran into battle only to realise that I was the only one there, and the rest of it decided to instead stay back and compare cod pieces while five angry archers, including Greg in a pointy hat, smashed poor Henry's head in. My time revisiting this game, safe to say, was emotional which leads me nicely onto how the game has improved when it comes to the litany of bugs that were present on launch. Well, during around 60 hours of playtime returning to the game, I encountered various villagers' obsessions with step-ups, a few demons from the nether realm, as well as gems such as Henry's trick-or-treating dressed up as a door, and a bandit that in his final moments just had to bust a move one more time. I'm not counting the previously mentioned face assaults, as I'm chalking that up to Henry simply being particularly kissable those days and the enemies just not being able to control themselves. After ranting about design decisions as well as showcasing its still pretty buggy experience, you would think that returning to the Steam reviews, I would hold fast on my thumbs down, that I gave it in 2018. But honestly, I really enjoyed my time playing through the game finally. The atmosphere and immersive world really gave me a feeling of escapism. The combat, even though it was a bore lake at times, was refreshing, is when you start to get a grip and coming out victorious, I really felt like an underdog son of a blacksmith that despite the odds, was becoming a force to be reckoned with. The role playing in this RPG is incredible, even if the game side of it falters somewhat at times. Even the bugs, I have to admit now that the game breaking ones are far less prevalent, gave me a slightly endearing feeling that I get with games such as Oblivion when something goofy happens. 
there's a wide range of main and side quests to get up to, as well as now a number of DLCs, adding in some quite unique experiences. With Kingdom Come in 2022, you'll have to put some work in to break through and experience the game that the developers put so much passion into. It's not for everyone, and it's a far cry from the more hand-holding, linear options available, but for fans of RPGs with a heavy focus on the role-playing side of things, Kingdom Come gave me an experience that I quite frankly thought had died out many years ago. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.